All right, hello folks, uh, Captain Matt here again, and uh, just a joy and a thrill to be able to share some more worm stuff with you guys. Uh, tonight, we are going to look at bre small breeder bins, some people call them breeder bins, others call them production buckets, and we're going to look at um, how to increase your worm population and your castings rapidly, and it's done through uh, the breeder bin. And so I just wanted, I had a number of people ask me, how do you, what do you put in them? How do you do it? So I thought tonight what we would do is just talk about it. And I would actually take you through every step that I go through uh, to make a production bin. Okay, so uh, we're going to get going, but we're going to take you back to uh, the winter time. I do, I do breeder buckets in the winter. Summer is just too busy for me and I just can't do it. Uh, but we'll take you back and we'll show you when we had 80 breeder bins here. And it was quite, uh, it was quite the deal because we were producing lots of worms and lots of cocoons and lots of castings. And, and uh, we'll do it again this winter. But right now, uh, summer's here and I'm a gardener and I'm a boater. And, and, uh, and, and all the kids are going to be around more often because school is going to be out. So we just back off on the breeder buckets for a short period of time. And we'll start off with uh, just talking a little bit about the Brockwood shifter because the Brockwood shifter uh, for small time uh, guys like myself, you know, is just a perfect tool. Now, if you're going into a larger business and a larger operation, you're going to want something beyond the Brockwood. But I, I produce about five tons of, uh, of castings uh, in, in the last winter. And um, I did it with this. So it's not, you know, and it, it's, it takes a little more time than uh, having the big uh, turbine or the big turbo um, sifter. But um, for me, price-wise, it works. Uh, we had a great time in the market. We had a great time uh, selling it to the stores and using just some Rockwood. Okay, so this screen here is quarter inch. And when I um, rake uh, in the continuous bin and bring down castings. This is the screen that I use. And the reason is this, I'll show you. The quarter inch is because what I put into, very rough, lots of sticks and wood. It's, so I make this myself and it's, um, it's leaves and it's wood chips and all sorts of stuff. Worms really go to it and uh, the microorganisms dissolve it a little bit more and that's that. But when it comes to um, a production bin, it's very important that you have the, a real, real fine uh, bedding. And the reason is because we're going, to, we're going to take our breeder bucket when it's time to harvest it and we're going to put it on the, on the rockwood shifter here and two things happen. Here we have a uh, 3 32nd inch hole and that's where this, that's where this section here is where the worm castings go through. And then the lower section here is quarter is eighth of an inch, and that's big enough for the cocoons to go through. The cocoons can't fit through here, they're too big. So they move down, drop the castings, and when it gets to here, then it's dropping cocoons and, and some bedding at the same time. And then it all ends up, whatever's left ends up over here with the worms, the worms come out, and some bedding comes out and it goes into that bin there. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is show you um, how, I, how I go ahead and separate. Now, I'm taking, I'm taking compost from my compost pile outside and I put four shovels on here. And because of the size of the holes in here, this is going to be, um, it, it's, it's going to be really fine, and I'll show you that in a minute. So, yeah, go ahead. Can you turn it on? Push it? Yeah, push it and hold it for a second. So, what did I do? I just, I put it on. You have to have, if it's too wet, it's not going to go through. Very important that you don't have too much moisture because it will just get clogged. I had a load of compost that I dug put too close to the ground this morning, and as I did this, it wasn't going through at all. But, um, so I went into the middle of a pile that has a good amount of moisture in it, but it's not too much moisture 
and it's going through the shifter perfectly. It's just a, a perfect amount. So I work it back and forth, and because I want I want to get everything I can out of the of the um, of the compost uh, that is able to get through, I want it to get through. So I'll just work it a little bit, and at a certain point, I just will let it go, and it's all anything that doesn't get through the holes here um, will eventually go down there. And I separate it because if you have big clumps, that whole clump will move down, but it doesn't have a chance to get through the holes here. So we'll let that run out for a second. And uh, I'll show you what we what we got as a result of this. We're just going to pop it up, move it out, and I want to show you what we came up with. I mean, you have to see this. It's just it is pure. It's so fine, and that's what the worms are going to live in in the breeder bin, and they're going to eat and they're going to poo in there, and and, uh, and they're going to return it back in that that style so that when we finally do separate the, the worm castings and the cocoons and the worms, um, we will end up with 90, 80 to 90% of the worm castings uh, that was in that bucket. The problem is this, if it's too coarse, let's say you use something like this and it's, it's coarse, uh, every time you use it, it's gonna build and build and build and because you use the same bucket over and over again. All right, folks, so uh, we sifted the entire, we didn't wanna waste your time watching me sift in 100 pounds, but we now have our 100 pounds of really fine um, uh, worm bedding for our uh, production buckets or for our worm buckets, however you wanna call it. And it's just, it's fine. It's approximately 100 pounds. And a two, few things that we want to do before we start. Moisture level is really important. If you're too dry, you're going to kill your worms. If you're too wet, you're not going to be able to sift it in the brockwood. So it has to be just about right. So over here, I have a, um, a moisture meter. It's very simple. You can pick it up. Um, I don't have one to offer you today, but I'll find one and try to get you a link on the bottom of the page. Um, but this moisture meter, you take it and, and you just put it, it, there's no battery or anything in it, and, and you just stick it in the soil, okay, and it's going to tell you what the level is. So right now, it's showing us that it's well into the moist, the moist area, okay? I can feel it. See, watch this. If I squeeze my soil and open my hands and it doesn't fall apart, it's too wet. And it's not gonna it's not gonna sift for you so you've got to have it but I have the meter tells us we have plenty of moisture in there I'm gonna add a touch more the second thing you want to do is you're gonna want to have a, um, thermometer. a thermometer yeah uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you're gonna want to have a uh, compost thermometer and what that does I'll turn turn it on here and this I'll stick in, it's gonna tell me what the temperature of my bed is. We wanna make sure it's not too warm, you know, keep it around 70 in the summertime is really acceptable, but uh, worms don't like getting too hot. Uh, 85 is like really getting up there. Uh, so I would keep it in the 70s somewhere. Um, when we put these breeder bins together, we're gonna to put them in the, cool, the coolest place we can find in the garage, whatever you do, don't put them out in the sun because you'll kill all the worms, okay? So now I'm gonna turn on the cement mixer. And be careful with this, these things, they have no safeties on them. If you get caught, you're going for a spin. I, I'm checking the moisture level right now and I'm just, I'm a little concerned that I may not have enough moisture in here. So what I'm gonna do is ask Jude to spin it again and we're gonna sprinkle it with some water. You don't wanna overdo, that's gonna be the big thing. Do little bits at a time, okay? okay. So um, here's how I, I personally determine it. I'll take a handful of it and squeeze it, squeeze it with all of my might. I don't have as much as I did when I was a kid, Jude, but I got some might in there. And if I open my hands, it should just literally start to fall apart. But it didn't, as soon as my hand opened up, it didn't, 
fall out. I had to give it a little bit of touch, but that's, that's perfect. That's what we're looking for right there. And now we're ready to set up a breeder bin. So how do we do it? What I do is I have a bucket. This is two and a half, this is two and a half gallons. And that's what we're gonna put in the breeder buckets. I use five gallon buckets as breeder buckets, but this, this is, this is, for, hi there. Oh, you got a helper. Yeah, I sure do. Hi, what's your name? Are you a worm? Are you a worm? I'm, I didn't, I didn't know worms look like this. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, you can put that in there. Okay. All right, good. Is his father around? <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Okay. <laughs> Ready? All right, so first thing I'm going to do, it, well, so this is, I use this only as for measurement because in a breeder bin, we're going to put two and a half gallons and we're going to put 100 worms per gallon. Now, I, I measured the worms ahead of time because I don't want to waste your time. When it comes to measuring worms, you can pick them. Early on, I used to take them and count them and put exactly 250. Now I weigh them and, and on a little scale, and uh, sometimes I have soil, I have to guess a little bit. But one thing you don't want in a breeder bin is you don't want too many worms because if you put too many worms in a breeder bin, they, they won't breed as ferociously. The, the math of one gallon per 100 worms is been scientifically proven, scientifically proven that that is gonna produce worm productivity and they're gonna to start to reproduce at that point. And uh, so uh, we, want, we want top production. So again, you don't wanna to put too many worms in. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put worms in here. And these worms have a little soil with them. And I don't know if you can see in this kind of light, but we've got, a, got quite, a, quite a few worms in here, okay? And we have some soil that was sifted uh, that I put in with them already. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is fill this up with our production, um, with, our, with our bedding. So this is the bedding that the worms are gonna live in for 14 days. All right, so now we have two and a half gallons. We have approximately 250 worms. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in there. I now have an active production bucket and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put a lid on it. I, I cut these uh, polyethylene bags. What I did is put the lid from the, from the plastic bucket down and with a sharp razor knife, I just cut them. And I put these in and the reason is we don't want it to dry out in any way, shape, or form. And that's perfect, perfect size there, so it will not lose moisture at all. So we put that on and we put it away for two weeks. And in two weeks, then we turn around and we go and start taking those buckets and sifting them and separating the castings from the cocoons and from the worms. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna take the production bucket and pour it all right on here. We're gonna separate it. We're gonna have two buckets here. The first bucket is to catch, is to catch worm castings. Okay, we're gonna put that bucket right under this chute. I'm looking down now into bucket number one for the worm castings. Now, I'm gonna take the next bin and I'm going to put it right here and I'm looking right down into that bin and that's going to receive the cocoons plus some bedding and then we need an empty bucket and then we're going to put this bucket right here and that's going to catch the worms and anything that did not make it through. I always like to, some folks run their machine continuously and keep dumping on it. I like to start out differently. I like to have it off. Here's our bucket. We're gonna take the plastic top off. We'll pour the entire bucket on. Yeah, you, 
Now we took the bucket that we just filled over there. You have to imagine that it's been working for two weeks. We know it has worms in it and uh, we don't want to let it sit here too long because the worms will start to crawl through. And now we're going to sift it. And I use a board so that it doesn't all go down at once. Bringing it back very gently because we've got worms in here. I want I want all the all the castings that I can get through here in that in that bin below. But I also want to make sure that I don't have such a big pile that the cocoons can't make it down um, and end up in that bucket because that bucket is going. Uh, is not going anywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to let everything slide. Everything's going into the production bucket that we're going to reestablish again. Okay, so we'll turn it off. Now, this is the worms and some of the food and some of the uh, castings. Our first bucket is where the cocoons would come through. And here's the amount that came through out of that first two and a half gallons. And in here would be mixed uh, egg cocoons and which hold the eggs. And then the second one, and this here, because it has eggs, <coughs> because it has cocoons that hold the eggs, this goes into the bulk bin. And that's where I hatch my cocoons. But in this one here, in this bin, this would be all worm castings. Okay, remember the worms have infiltrated this completely. But after two and a half weeks, those worms have done a job. There is no finished product that is 100% worm poo. But what is what does slip through with the worm poo is so energized by all the microorganisms and the enzymes and the minerals uh, that the whole thing becomes a part of what we call worm castings today. And so this is the second half. This is a lot finer. So then I would now take this and start building a one ton bag. And in a day, I'll do 30 or 40 of these without any problem. If I push, I could probably do all 80 if I needed to. And 80 will, uh, 80 brings us to uh, 160 gallons of uh, worm castings. And you do that enough and it fills up a, a one ton, ton bag pretty quickly. Folks, here we are. We have our worms in this production bucket now. We have them in and the leftover bedding. But what we have to do is we wanna reestablish this bedding for another two weeks and we'll go through the process again because we still have our 250 worms in here and i'm going to go back to my two two and a half gallon measuring cup i'll pour what's left over into that cup okay and then which is all the worms and leftover uh, um, bedding and now i'm going to fill it once again Now I have two and a half gallons here. I put that back in a, in a five gallon bucket. We're set up with 250 worms with two and a half gallons of bedding. And we're gonna put a piece of plastic over it. Make sure that we don't lose our moisture. And we're gonna take it and set it aside with all the other production buckets. And so the cycle just keeps going over and over again. That's, that's what Captain Matt does. We, we've seen some great uh, production of worms and some really, really great production of worm castings. Don't forget, if you have questions about what we've talked about, uh, please don't hesitate to ask, okay? Um, on the bottom, remember there's some links and uh, if you need anything. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. It, 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 it just really helps us out a whole bunch. So folks, until 
next time. Uh, we have some real exciting videos coming up, but until next time, uh, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to share that. I hope it's been help for you. So thank you so much for all your questions and all your comments. Uh, a lot of you have been nothing but an encouragement to me that makes me want to just keep doing this. And um, I thank you for that. So until next time, signing out. Take care. See ya. Let me take you down to the streets of London. There I'll show you something that'll definitely change your mind.